We know mortgages have never been as crazy as they are now. Oh, I wish I had the secret for everyone. I know. What's our magic? What's our what's our magic potion, Kara? <laughs> the magic potion, I think, is to look for a home that you can afford. Is now the time or should I wait it out? If you can afford it, I think now is definitely the time. So Kara, we know mortgages have never been as crazy as they are now. Is that or have they always been crazy? Well, they have crazy times. I would say I wouldn't say Kay. never. Okay. But I would say we are definitely in a challenging time. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk about a few of those challenges. Okay. Obviously, we know, oh, if you can't have cash, you're not getting into a house. You're going to have a bidding war. Good luck getting approved now that all the houses are at least $2 million, right? Yeah. All of those different yes. things, right, that are going on in mortgages. But really, from a national outlook perspective, um, what are your thoughts? You've obviously been in the mortgage industry for a long time. Um, what what are your thoughts is what environment we're in right now? Well, I don't think Utah is any different than what we're experiencing nationwide. Yeah. Nationwide, we obviously have a housing shortage. That is one of the biggest issues that so many states are dealing with. And on top of the housing mor mortgage industry, we're also experiencing high values. Prices are going up so much that people just can't afford a home yeah. based on the value of the home and then throw in inflation and rising rates. It's not a good in, not a good mix in any way. Yeah, yeah, lots of different cons. So yes. how as, let's say, home buyers, mm -hmm. how do we overcome these? What do we do? Oh, I wish I had the secret for everyone. I know, what's our magic, what's our, what's our magic potion, Kara? <laughs> the magic potion, I think, is to look for a home that you can afford. That is going to be the most important is to get pre-approved and know what you qualify for. You don't want to get out looking for a home in hopes of buying something and then find out you don't qualify for that. That's going to break your heart. Okay. So to get pre-qualified is going to help you so much, but to look for a home in a reasonable price range. Okay. Um, right now, there are so many things that home buyers have to do to even get an offer. It's We are in unprecedented times, like you said. Yes. yes. Yeah. So talk to me about that pre-qualification. Um, maybe for those that haven't been pre-qualified before or aren't homeowners yet, what does that look like? So what that's going to look like for the home buyer is to contact a financial institution and hopefully it's Mountain America, right? Yes. And during that pre-qualification, your loan officer is going to meet with you, talk to you about your debts, your income, what kind of income you have, how long it's going to last. They may take an application, have your credit pulled because your credit score is definitely going to play into what you can qualify for. And then based on all of that information, they will let you know the amount that you're going to qualify for. Typically to get pre-approved, less than a week. Typically a couple of days is all it takes. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Now, I remember when I went to buy my first home mm -hmm. and the loan officer came back and said, hey, this is what you're pre-approved for. I was like, I can buy a mansion? Like, this is amazing. Yes. But obviously, that's not what I could afford. Right. And there's a big difference there. Okay. And I think typically, smart loan officers are going to have that conversation with the home buyer. How much do you feel comfortable paying? How much do you have in other debts? Are you looking at buying a new car? What kind of things do you want to do after you own a home? Because all of that will play into how much you're going to want to pay in a monthly payment every month. Yeah. So... Talk to us a little bit more about that. I've heard like, hey, when it comes to budgeting, your home should only be like 20 to 30 percent of your overall budget. Is that true? Is that like a good ballpark or what are your thoughts? That is a good ballpark. 30 okay. percent is probably a good ballpark for your monthly payment. I think the other thing that is important to realize is that not only are you making a payment to the lender, but your payment's going to include your property taxes, your homeowner's insurance, and then you're going to have utilities on top of that. Those are not included in your payment. But all of those things play into how much you can afford. Yeah. Do you think 30% is realistic in this environment? Or are we going to have to go like in above that? In this market, we are going to have to go above that, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Am I okay? 
to spend 70% of my income on, on where I live. <laughs> <laughs> not 70%, Christalina. Okay. That okay. would not be okay. okay. Typically, when you're looking at doing a mortgage, we, as a lender, we want to keep your overall debt to income ratio below 45%. Okay. So that's going to include your mortgage payment and then any other installment payments that you have. What do you mean installment payment? So that would include any type of car loans, credit cards, student loans, anything that you make a monthly payment on. It does okay. not include any type of utilities. Okay. Okay. So keep all my installment payments at 45%. Below 45%. Okay. okay. And that is based on your gross income, not okay. your net. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good to know. So it gives you a little bit more buying power. Okay. I love that. I love that. So is there any, we know there's a shortage in inventory. There is. Right. Um, is there anything that as a home buyer I can do to like be super prepared aside from being pre-qualified when I go into this crazy market to try and find a home? Oh, that's a good question as well. It is yeah. one I, I'm not sure if I have the exact answer for. But when you work with an agent, they yeah. are definitely going to be able to steer you in the right direction, have you look at homes that are within your budget. If you have money saved, that is going to definitely play into your favor because right now so many um, home buyers have to make offers over the asking price. And if you're offering more than the asking price, you as a home buyer are going to have to come in to closing with cash out of pocket. Yeah, yeah. Would you say, and I know you're a mortgage loan officer, not a, <laughs> you were, not a realtor, but would you say really in this environment, a realtor's key? I would, yes. Okay. I would definitely say use an agent. Okay. Yes. Okay, awesome. That's their level of expertise. Let them help you, let them guide you. Okay. And would you say, is there still, are there still any pockets of affordable housing for people? Or are we just kind of, oh, it is what it is? I think there are pockets of affordable homes. It's trying to find those. And those pockets, I think, have decreased as so many Zoom cities have come up where people have moved to those cities for remote work, yeah. where you don't have to live and work in the same community any longer. And so those areas of affordability have decreased over time. Yeah. Over the past two years. Yeah. Interesting that you say that. So I recently just went to a conference mm -hmm. and it was like the first in-person thing I've been to in a long time. Right. Great and to it, see people it, face to face. Yes, it was. It <laughs> yes. was wonderful. But so many people that I talk to, right. You're like, oh, where are you from? As you're getting to know people, they're like, um, everywhere. I'm a digital mm -hmm. nomad. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, what does this even mean? So they just, you know, live somewhere for six weeks and go somewhere else for six weeks. So that, to your point, when you say Zoom Town, mm -hmm. is affecting the market as well. It is. Yes. Okay. Interesting. So do you find that's um, affecting, it, affecting it just in a different way? Or there's less inventory because so many people are buying homes and then going elsewhere? Well, I think there's less inventory because so many people are purchasing. And... I'm sure you speak to neighbors that may have moved in recently and yeah. they're coming from everywhere. It's not yes. locally. They come from any state across the nation. And so because of that, there definitely is a shortage of homes, which affects the price. And then as people are offering over a, the asking price, that increases the value and that doesn't play well into the market either. Yeah. So interesting. So there's just so many, mm -hmm. so many different things. So many aspects that go into it. Yeah. So one thing, obviously, when it comes to looking at mortgages and purchasing a home, one of the things that I remember, right, back in the day when I bought my first house was average days on the market. Like mm -hmm. always look for that. Where are we at with that at this point? What do you think it is? I, I don't like two. I have no idea. Some Homes and a lot of homes go under contract the day they're listed. Oh, my goodness. I think the average right now in Utah is five days oh that it's God. on the market before an offer is accepted. And there have been times in the past where we have been as high as, you know, 30, 60, even 90 days. Yeah, yeah. But I believe right now and towards the end of last year, it was probably less than five days. Okay, interesting. So let's say I am a first-time home buyer mm -hmm. and I'm wanting to get into my house Good grief. Is now the time or should I wait it out? What are your thoughts? If you can afford it, I think now is definitely the time. Okay. Unfortunately, we've all heard rates are going up and they will continue to go up this year and values are going to keep going up. So 
It's better now if you can buy a home, you're going to start building equity. Even if it is at a higher value, you're going to build that equity. Um, If you're going to stay in the home long term, or even I would say longer than five to seven years, it's a great time to buy a home. If you find that you might be leaving or moving in the next year or two, don't buy a home. Okay. Okay. That's really, really, really good advice. Um, How, I mean, with inflation, obviously we all know we're in an environment of inflation. Um, How does that affect home prices? Is that helping the value increase as well? Or is it mainly just because of that inventory? It's a combination of the inventory and and inflation. It is. They are both helping to drive that those values higher okay just so crazy it is yeah um looking at our footprint in the intermountain west you know utah idaho nevada arizona all those surrounding states um we had recently an economist speak to us about the housing market and how things are looking from an economic standpoint what are your thoughts on that you want to share i i've actually heard from natalie she is the director of the kim gardner Institute at the University of Utah. And okay. I love to hear her speak. She always has such great information and statistics. I actually heard from her just last week. Awesome. She was in a luncheon that I was at and she spoke. And Utah is not any different than the states that we have our footprint in. Every state is experiencing those issues. Um, Natalie is experienced in Utah because that's her footprint. And as she spoke, it was very interesting to hear from her because she said, as we've talked about the housing shortage, yeah. right now in Utah, we are short about 44,500 homes. Oh my goodness. And the time it's going to take us to kind of dig out of that hole could be five to 10 years. So this isn't a short-term problem. This okay. is definitely going to be something long-term. Okay. So really, there's no waiting it out. Not really. Okay. (laughs) Not right now. (laughs) Okay. Interesting. Interesting. 